Good evening. Welcome to the 25th St. Louis Chanel. I don't know how many of you were here the first year when we went till two o'clock in the morning for our concert, but the fact that we're still here 25 years later is a testament to all of you. Thank you. So let's welcome John Skelton, uh, Farhan Chi, host extraordinaire, uh, who will introduce all of our wonderful musicians for the evening. So John, come on out. Thank you. Once again, a big round for Mike Mullins, a man who, without whom this would not be possible. Well, it's so nice to be back here again. And uh, I used to play here a lot before, long before the channel and, and used to play in ver with various ensembles. My most memorable memory, if you can say that, was a little ensemble we had for a, a couple of years. And we entered the room playing two Highland Pipes and me on Bombard. <laughs> and uh, we didn't have any trouble with the audience that night, I can assure you. <laughs> I'm kind of shell-shocked. Anyway, ears were bleeding. Anyway, let's... Uh, so I'm so glad to see you all here. Um, uh, you're not at home in pajamas watching Netflix or something dreadful. So, I mean, I can go and put pajamas on if you wish, but it, no. Okay, let's start things off. Um, a, a, a good friend of this, the John Wayne and Irish music, and a great uh, flute player and whistle player, um, and uh, Frank Claudy, and he's been accompanied with by, by a local fella. Um, well, semi-local. He's just about to move to Arizona, so you better get used to, used to not seeing him. So, uh, Frank Claudy and Keith Rains, big round of applause, please. Thank you. And this is Tara McGovern.
Thank you. Thanks. It's, uh, it's great to be kicking things off here uh, tonight. The last time we played on this stage was in 2019, and then you know what happened in 2020. Yeah. Uh, so it's wonderful to uh, be back here again uh, in St. Louis and playing for this great event. So we played some reels there. Now, what's next? Well, we're going to play a couple of waltzes. Oh, yeah. Uh, the first one I, I wrote for uh, Dave Hicks, uh, who's a great friend of ours, and uh, composed some tunes. We're going to play some tunes of his just after that. And then the other one is uh, uh, a waltz by Billy, Billy McComsky called The Diamond. You were supposed to talk longer. <laughs> I thought we had that time. Okay.
Thank you. Well, we played a waltz for David, and we're going to play three of David's jigs. Uh, David uh, was an attendee here for many years, and um, unfortunately came down with a form of cancer. And during his recovery, or during the cancer, he wrote some 140 tunes and uh, published them. I wrote the foreword because he was concerned that he was in remission, and if he thought of any more tunes, his cancer would come back. And of course, <laughs> that wasn't true at all. But these are three of his jigs. The first is the celluloid mouse. The second is... The Dance of the, the Dance Fleas, of the and the third is uh, Bent Willow. One, two, three, four. <laughs>
Thank you. Yeah, we miss Dave Hicks a lot uh, in the Iowa City crowd, and uh, so we like to keep his music alive, and we always try to play some of his tunes. I'm going to uh, check my tuning. I, you know, I threw a B7 chord in there, <laughs> and I think that the, the gods of Irish music are yeah. complaining about that. You could overthrow democracy with too many B7 chords in a row. Yeah. It's a danger to everything we know and love. I think it might be a vitamin that I need. <laughs> it might be the... The one vitamin that's not. Oh, I got my B7. Vitamin. I got a B7 deficiency. That's why I put it in there. Did you put the. Uh, yeah, the oh, capo. oh. Did you put the capo on the crazy way? We were told to remind him. Yes. For those of you taking his class, this is, uh, this is, high, this is high art right here. Yeah. <laughs> and I have to put on my finger picks. That's this true takes too. even longer. And these finger picks are the only ones that work for me. And yeah. Very uncomfortable. You have to actually slide them underneath your fingernails. Yeah, he's told a lot of government secrets on stage ouch, doing this. Ouch, ouch. Yeah. Oh, I'll talk. <laughs> yeah. I'll talk. I, 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 put, I put those secret files in my basement. <laughs> ow, ow. Well, you put your instrument case in the basement, so I guess that's... Uh, well, that's where the secret that's files that's are. That's a, yeah. This is uh, a song followed by a couple of reels, um, and this is our last, last This is it for us, yeah. Thank you very much. We've, we've really enjoyed Thank being you. on stage with you. This is uh, called um, Lonesome Robin. It's a song by uh, Bob Coltman. One, two, three, four. <laughs> up from your bed of straw see if you can bend back your short bow one last time speak from your wounds and say you don't care for you know it will prey on your mind wherever your arrow it falls to the ground will lay lonesome robin down one last time No more Robin No more Your outlaw days Are over When you were A little boy You had to go To bed early While the sun still shone Just like sleep was the end of the world and tomorrow would never never come so now lonesome robin won't you close your eyes so that the sun may rise one last time no more robin no more your outlaw days are old
deceptions have whittled you down all of the times that you've ever had have took to their heels and run away hold on hold on to whatever is closest to you that's all old Sir Robin can do One last time No more Robin, no more Your outlaw days are over Robin, no more Your outlaw days the uh, weekend. There we go. So I hope he has a nice time down there in Arizona. I'm sure it'll be a little bit different from Iowa City in, in many different ways. Anyway. Uh, we're going to get ready for our second performer tonight. Now, um, I'll just tell you a little bit. Um, if, if you're unaware, if, I, I'm assuming, can I just see us, if you don't mind, how many people are here actually for the channel to, as, as workshop attendees or just as generally the channel general? Yeah, most of you, a lot of you, okay. Oh, no, that's great. So some of you are kind of what I call, you know, civilians. <laughs> you're, not, you're not part of this little family. Um, so the channel is, is, is uh, and I'm trying to, Excuse my pronunciation, I, I'm from uh, North London, where Irish isn't spoken, uh, <laughs> except on Saturday nights, <laughs> some of the pubs. But um, so a channel is a gathering of, of pipers, primarily. And so this weekend, it, it's, every from its evolution from 25 years ago, is about the Irish pipes, the Illan pipes, uh, with things that I play like an ancillary. You know, so we got a lot of pipers, and so. But I, I remember, I'm just going back, back in my youth uh, when I was growing up in London. Um, there weren't very many pipers. London's a big place, you know, and there's a lot of people, Irish people, living there. But you could count on the on the fingers of maybe one and a half hands the number of Ireland pipers in London. There just weren't many pipers, and that wasn't just London. That was indicative of Ireland as a whole. There weren't that many pipers. It, the instrument there was a danger. People were, cons were seriously worried that the instrument, not exactly dying out, but it was going to become very much a minority thing. And now we see what's happened. There's a huge explosion in interest in the Ireland pipes and the Peabody Ireland and so on and so forth. It's fantastic. It's beyond belief. I, I remember being in London when the London Pipers Club was, was first f formed in the early 1980s. Tommy McCarthy, Tommy Keane and Billy Brown and people like this. And, the, you know, they had a, like 11 pipers in the whole of London. That was it. And now look at it, it's a fantastic. So tonight's concert, we have three pipers, uh, three you know, young pipers, fantastic pipers. And what we would like to show to have you now to, to play for us, uh, a wonderful young piper who is part of the, the, the wonderful explosion of, of interest and in Ireland pipe. And so all the way from County Carlow, um, he's playing a wonderful musician. He's playing um, 
the pipes he plays were, were um, you know, entrusted to him by Napibri Illan. They were the pipes that were played by the maestro Liam O'Flynn, and I believe before that, Seamus Ennis. So this, this is not just a young man who's a fantastic player. He's actually playing an instrument which has more history than most people would, would even imagine. So can we have a big round of applause for all the way from God, Colin Broderick. Thanks a million. haven't been enjoying the, the humidity or, or, or lack thereof um, the past few days. Um, I was down in, in Florida just before I came here and the pipes were having a bit of a spa treatment down there with the, with the humidity. <laughs> so um, they, they don't know what's hit them now since they come here. It's very dry, but we'll, uh, it'll be okay. So um, thanks a million uh, to everyone for coming and thanks to Mike uh, for asking me to, to be here. I, I've been to St. Louis a couple of times now. I was here in 2019. Uh, uh, and I was for the Chinole, and I was here as well during the summer um, with a friend of mine, uh, Patrick Finley, uh, playing here in the Focal Point. So um, I'm, I'm glad to say that I'm relatively familiar with the area. So um, yeah, as, as John mentioned, I'm playing a set of pipes which have been entrusted to me by Nepi uh for which I'm very, very, very grateful. They're, they have huge historical significance. Uh, which I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about in, in a few minutes, but uh, I'm going to start off with uh, a couple of hornpipes from the playing of Limo Flynn. Uh, so th uh, the first one is The Humours of Castle Bernard, and the second one is Rick's Rambles. So I hope you enjoy these.
Thank, <laughs> thanks a million. So, um, uh, as, as John mentioned, uh, these pipes were, were played by the piper Limo Flynn, but um, they, they had quite a history uh, b before uh, Lim also. So the, the, to tell you a bit about them, they were made by a man called Leo Rosen. And for anyone who uh, isn't familiar with Irish piping, Leo Rosen was a very, very important figure. He was a, a teacher of, of pipes. He was a maker of of instruments and uh, a fantastic player as well. Um, so he uh, made these in 1938 for a good friend of his called Sean Reed. And uh, Sean Reed was the county engineer in Ennis, in County Clare, uh, back in the, the 30s and 40s. And that was a qu quite a good job at the time. So um, he uh, Sean had a bit of money to spend on a nice instrument. So he bought these anyway and um, he played them himself uh, for a number of years. He, he played in the Tullochaley band. Um, and, uh, but uh, on top of that, he, he was known to be very generous with his time and with his musical instruments and all that kind of thing. So he gave these pipes to basically whoever needed them. At the time in County Clare, there was maybe eight or nine Illin pipers and maybe five working sets of pipes. So you can do the maths there yourself. But this, th th this was one of the working sets anyway. So um, it's been through the hands of a number of great pipers in, in Clare over the years. But um, primarily Willie Clancy uh, had them uh, in, in the 50s for, for quite a number of years um, and, and, and played them. So uh, then in the, in the late 60s, um, Clancy at that stage had got another set of pipes. And these were sitting idle. So Liam found out about them asked Sean Reed if he could if he could take them and uh, that was kind of uh, uh, I suppose the start of their next life if you want to call it that so um, anyway tonight I, I'm playing a lot of music from people who uh, from pipers who really really ins inspire me so uh, the first few tunes were from uh, Limo Flynn uh, the next tune I got from a, a, a good friend of mine called Benedict Kohler um, it's a it's a very popular uh, slow air called Slán Le Moy, so I hope you enjoy it.
Thank you. Um, so uh, I'd like to finish up uh, with the set of reels. Um, and uh, the, the first tune uh, is called Malloy's Fancy. And I got this from uh, a great album called The King of the Pipers, which was recorded by uh, Leo Rosen. Um, uh, again, one of my heroes. And the, the, the following two tunes uh, are called The Market Day and Speed the Plow. And I heard Lee Mufflin play both of these. So um, thanks very much for, for listening. And I'm sure I'll be chatting to some of you later on. So hope you enjoy the rest of the concert.
applause, Colin Broderick. Um, uh, reason I'm sitting down is, uh, once again, I'm trying to in include people who may be, may be not that familiar with Irish music and soul, the, the, the tunes, you know, they all have names. And um, It's been my sort of weird, geeky uh, interest over the years to find Irish names, Irish tunes with the names of crustaceans in them. Uh, you get, you know, uh, Irish tunes of lots of birds, like the lark in the morning, the wren's nest, etc. Lots of, uh, lots of mammals, of course, the otter's holt and the, etc. Uh, and the saddle, the pony. Uh, lots of nat native things, nat natural things, the oak tree, the gooseberry bush, but very few tunes that have crustaceans. <laughs> I can think of a couple. There's one called the the lobster. There's another one called crabs in the skillet. That's about it. And t so imagine my surprise when I was in Brittany a while back and a guy came up to me one night and said, uh, did you play this tune, My Son's a Prawn? <laughs> I thought, fantastic, I've got number three. My son is a prawn. Uh, great. He said again, you, you know this tune, My Son's a Prawn? I said, no, I, I don't. Could you play it for me? Mason's Apron. <laughs> Known in Brittany as My Son's a Prawn. <laughs> so on that note, <laughs> it's a true story. On that note, I hand you over to a wonderful Constantine player all the way from Milltown, Mulbay in the County Clare. Um, he was here a couple of years ago, wonderful player. <laughs> Two. No, it's okay, Eric. Let me show you quickly anybody in the audience that is ever going to get involved in any kind of public speaking or music. How to screw up a sound engineer? You do this. You go through the. You, you do this. You go, one, two, three, five, seven, eight, nine, <laughs> eleven. Wrong. Mic cut out. Gotcha. <laughs> anyway, a wonderful Constantine player all the way from County Clare, from Milltown, Mulberry, no better place. Um, please round of applause for Liam O'Brien. <laughs> How are you all doing? Oh, thanks. Um, it's great to be back. I was here in 2018. Um, it was actually my first time in America, so I was a bit kind of addled coming into the country, but I'm a bit more relaxed now, so it's good. I was able to enjoy the zoo today without getting nervous. So. Yeah, thanks a million for having me, Mike and all the gang. Um, it's good to see all the boys again. And, I might um, just start off with a couple of tunes from home. Um, obviously, being from Midtown Malibu, I need to represent a small bit of the tradition that comes from there. Um, so Junior Crean was a great fiddle player from up the road, and my man would have been pretty good friends with him, um, and my uncles and all that kind of stuff. So I might just play a couple of um, Junior Crean tunes to start. Uh, the first one is the Sacker Roy. I think I'm always mixing up the sakurai and stack of oats, but I think uh, I think uh, I think this one is the sakurai, and the second one is the hills of core. So thanks a million. <coughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Thanks a million. Yeah, went into the completely wrong tune, but at least it was still a Junior Korean tune. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, so that was another Junior Korean tune. But, uh, yeah, I, I'll switch I, um, it, it's great to come out and uh, to play at festival. I actually don't really get to play a whole lot of music anymore. I kinda, I'm working in an office, working with video stuff, um, so this is actually great to come and play. I was only playing a, s a session last week, and I think it was my third one since November. So it was, uh, yeah, sadly enough. But this is great to be come out here, and then I've we've been playing tunes since I landed. So, yeah, um, this one, uh, this one is a B flat concertina. I only came across it last year. Um, it's a maker by um, a maker from Germany called Ralph Schlim, and it's a seven mount concertina. But he actually moved over to Fecal, which is very handy, and moved his whole. Um, uh, his whole setup there, so he's kind of working on it there. But um, yeah, it's—I think it's only a year old or something like that. <coughs> but this is my actual baby. Um, this is a wheatstone that I got when I was 15, and it was actually finished on the 3rd of July 1919. And it would have spent most of its life in Australia, um, going around folk bands and stuff. And then I think it made its way across to South Africa and then up to London. And then a friend of mine found it. He's a concertina dealer kind of man. And they revived it and brought it back to life. And it ended up in Milton Melba. And thankfully, I came across it. So that's, uh, that's my, my actual baby. So yeah, I'll, um, I'll actually carry on. I might invite a very good friend of mine on stage, uh, Mr. Alan Murray. Um, um, I've only been really playing a bit of music with Alan in the last year, um, and it's always great when we do get to play together. But uh, I might start off with an air. It's um, it's not actually an air. It's a it's a march. Um, yeah, um, it's actually a march, but I I like playing it as an air. I just like the melody of it, and it's a Steve Cooney tune called Each Little Thing. And then I might carry on with a couple of jigs that I'm not too sure of the names of them. I think they're from Kerry, and I would have learned them off the great Michelle Mulcahy. Um, yeah, so not sure of the names of them, but we'll give them a go. I'll give, I'll give it a, the air a, a rattle first, and uh, yeah, let's see how it goes. Let's drag this over. <laughs>
Thanks very much. Um, as I said, it's great to be back, and thanks a million for having me. I'm going to play a set of reels to finish off. Um, sadly, I'm missing the Grotham Kyol Awards this weekend um, back at home. So Morris Lennon was uh, one of the recipients this year of the um, uh, Grotham uh, Commodore, or the, what's it called, the composition. Um, the composition winner. So Morris Lennon is a great fiddle player and composer from Leitrim and with Stockton's wing most of his life. But he's written many, many lovely tunes. And we'll, we'll start off with uh, one called The Stone of Destiny. And then we'll finish with a couple I would have learned from my mam back at home. Um, just when I was going to her classes, we either had a choice to do homework or sit into the classes with everyone else and <laughs> yeah we, we sat into every single class so um yeah so i'll um go on to the leafy banks and one i would have learned from them and we'll finish in with one i would associate with the singer john mccormack from back in the kind of 10s and 20s and it's molly brannigan's or some people call it the greenfields of america which I suppose we should call it while I'm here, but um, yeah, thanks a million for having me, and yeah, thanks to Alan as well. Yeah.
Thanks a million. We'll see you over the weekend. Thanks. Cheers. Okay, um, Liam O'Brien, fantastic. What a, what a fantastic. Thank you. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll finish out the first half now with the, what, what, a, what a other instrument than the Illan pipes and uh, a great piper, Michael Stribling, who apparently first came here to this channel 20 years ago, so he was probably like two weeks old. But uh, that's how you learn, isn't it? So. <laughs> True story, yes. <laughs> There's Michael Stribling. Um, I'm not entirely, entirely sure um, what his other, uh, he did tell me once, but he'll tell you in his own, own time, but not only is a great musician, he's also a fantastic uh, athlete. He does some, I forgot what it is, it's something athletic. Anyway, and as you can see, we have, he's, he's, brought, his own, uh, he's brought his own board. Uh, so maybe jujitsu. <laughs> Uh, with, um, Michael's going to be joined uh, during his set by Jackie O'Reilly, the great dancer, so get ready for that. All right, we'll leave you in, 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 the, in the delicate hands of Michael Stribling to finish off the first half. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, John, for that uh, wonderful introduction. And yeah, the, the board is, before he ruined the surprise with Jackie, you always got to keep him guessing. So it could be dance, interpretive dance, it could be jujitsu. so just keep, keep you on the edge of your seats. I'm absolutely delighted to be performing here for you tonight. As John said, my first Chinal experience was 20 years ago, right here, and I was ex just exposed to the very best pipers in the, uh, in the country and from Ireland, and it's just a real treat, uh, and I'm just very thankful to have been a part of this Chinal and to be here for you today. So I'm gonna begin with three jigs, and the first jig is called Johnny McGreevy's, and I learned this from the playing of Liam O'Flynn off of the album The Fine, Fine Art of Ill and Piping, uh, released in 1991. And then the next tune is a tune that I learned at a channel by our uh, gentleman friend, Michael Cooney, and it's called The Creel of Turf, and one of my favorite jigs. And to finish out, uh, The Buck in the Woods, which I learned from Tommy Keane. So, thank you.
I'm going to take a little, uh, little time to tell you about the historic set that I have the privilege of playing um, tonight. This set was made in the early 1880s by the Taylor Brothers of um, Philadelphia, and they were pipe makers uh, from Ireland who immigrated over, and they made uh, beautiful pipes. Um, and the, some of the names you might recognize that played Taylor sets were uh, Patsy Toohey. And I'd like to continue now with a uh, slow air that I learned from the playing of Patsy Tui from uh, the album The Piping of Patsy Tui, uh, released in 1919. And it's available at the Nipibri Illin shop. So if, you, if you'd like to hear a little bit more of Patsy Tui's piping, please please get that album. It's, it's wonderful. But this, res this set of pipes was restored um, at the end of 2021 by Benedict Kohler. And I'm very, very grateful to him. And it's just such a thrill to be playing this set. And yeah, it's, it's quite a thrill. So I'm going to continue on with a slow air called uh, The Pretty Girl Milking Her Cow, which I learned from Patsy Dewey. So hope you enjoy.
Thank you very much. I'd now like to finish off the first half of the concert here by inviting the amazing Jackie O'Reilly up for the last bit of my uh, set of hornpipes and reels here. So I'll start off with the Kildare Fancy, and then I'll follow that with uh, Pole Haypenny, and then we'll transition into two reels, the Swallow's Tail reel, and finally the Flogging reel. So thank you very much, and you're in for a great second half. Thank you. Thank you. 
Fantastic. Thank you. Um, Michael Strip and Jackie O'Reilly, if, you, if you've if you got nothing better to do tomorrow, you want to learn how to dance like that, it'll only take, it, only take you an hour or two. <laughs> Go to Jackie's workshop, that's tomorrow morning, oh, and enjoy yourself. Anyway, look, we have a short intermission. Um, I've been asked to tell you the AC has gone a bit crazy. Um, so that's why the doors are open. Um, and also, I'm deliberately making sure it's better for the pipes. <laughs> so, so, so the more like a sauna bath, the better. Anyway, so uh, take about a 20-minute intermission, get yourself a drink, stretch your legs, whatever, go outside, and then we'll see you back here for um, a slightly shorter second half, and then some tunes and sessions and things. So see you in 20 minutes. Thank you. One, two, three, four. I was just thinking of um, something a friend of mine told me. He said, he was talking about a pub we used to go to together back in London. We used to hear music. He said, you know, it was a really rough pub, a really rough pub. He says, I always remember the first night I went there, it was quiz night. The first question was, who are you looking at? <laughs> anyway, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's my kind of world. Um, I'd like to introduce to start off the second half uh, a good friend of mine all the way from Columbus, Ohio. And um, we've been we've done a few uh, concerts together over the last couple of months. Um, last time was in Bowling Green, Kentucky, uh, where we played a, a winter solstice concert. Um, he's a great musician, great bazooki player, um, and actually plays a hammer dulcimer too, uh, which which is a secret. Don't tell anybody. He doesn't tell me. I myself used to play the hammer dulcimer for about uh, oh about three weeks. I found it was hurting my lips, so I had to give it up. Anyway, so anyway, a great um, musician, a great, uh, great fella. Uh, so big round of all the way from Columbus. Big round of applause for Randy Klepper. Thank you. So I was trying to think, uh, I think the first time I came to the channel was maybe 2008, uh, so about 15 years ago. And I've been semi-regular ever since, uh, missed a couple of years in there, but uh, it's, it's great to be back. It's uh, great to be among friends here. And a huge thank you to Mike for, uh, for having me on this year for, uh, for teaching and, and playing a few tunes. So um, I'm gonna start out. Um, with um, the Groves Hornpipe um, and the version of it that I, I learned from uh, Matt Malloy's uh, recording. So in tribute to him, I'll capo up and play it in E-flat.
Thank you. <laughs> I have one fan. <laughs> we'll settle up later. So um, I'm playing on a, a, for some that we've noticed, a, a, just a slightly shorter version of a, of a bazooki, and this one's actually a, a five course, so maybe called a sitter or a bazooki. Um, and this one's about just, just barely under 23 inches, and, and I do that a bit because I like to do you know, some melody on it, um, but yet not too short to lose some of the character of, of the bazooki. So this one was made in Columbus, uh, Ohio, by uh, Tom Davis, J. Thomas Davis. He built uh, guitars for... Uh, for Jed Foley and for Pierre Ben Susan and uh, Arlo Guthrie, and I was lucky enough to uh, have him uh, be a friend and a player of Irish music, and just in the mood to build bazooki, so it worked out well for me. So, um, so with that, with, with Melody, I'm actually going to play um, a set. Uh, we'll start it with an air, which is again a little unusual for a, for a bazooki, but. Um, uh, we just um, we just lost a, a giant of a man, uh, Seamus Begley, um, a few months back, and um, yes, <laughs> and uh, <coughs> though he was a, a, a giant, uh, he also had this, this this soft, lovely voice, and um, uh, so uh, there was a there's a version of, of this one song that that he's that's associated with him, uh, Ankarik Malahe Malahe. Uh, if I get that right, uh, basically the cursed carry man, and um, I, I always loved the the version that he sang, and I love Jim Murray's guitar accompaniment with it, and uh, Pat Ducey uh, also recorded a lovely guitar solo version of it, so I'm pinching that in a big way uh, for this. So I'll start out uh, with that, and then uh, I will follow it with um, Miss Galvin's hornpipe and. Um, and a reel that I learned from the playing of Angelina Carberry um, called, uh, I, I think on her album, The Humors of Caragold. I think it's also maybe known as Patsy Campbell's and maybe another name yet. So. Anyway. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you. So I, I'd, uh, I'd like to invite up a guest, um, my, my longtime musical partner, uh, Mr. John Sherman. <laughs> also from Columbus. Uh, John and I have been playing together for, I, we, we keep losing count, somewhere around 15-ish years or something like that. Um, and uh, recorded together and uh, spent many, many, many hours in cars and hotel rooms together. So, Not practicing in cars. Yeah. Not practicing in cars. And, <laughs> At least not while driving. Anyway, so, um, but, uh, and I, I, I play dad get guitar as well, and I learned a lot of my early dad get uh, guitar uh, uh, from, from John, uh, from recordings that he had out and, and books he had out in Bell Bay back in the 90s and all. So uh, it's always been a pleasure to, uh, to have him as a musical partner. And uh, so we're going to play um, a couple of tunes that we put together. Uh, the first one, um, was written by Jerry Holland, uh, uh, Cape Breton uh, fiddler and a lovely writer of tunes, um, a tune by the name of Brenda Stubberts, many of you know it, um, right? And, um, and we'll follow that one with uh, uh, the Bear Island reel, and we'll, we'll finish up our set with that. Uh, again, I want to thank um, everyone here for having us out, and uh, to Mike again, uh, for John, to John Boldwan for putting us up. Uh, on, on various uh, sleeping items in his house. So. <laughs> <laughs> and for the company of his cats.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Not too bad, was it? I've said this before, maybe not to you guys, but you don't realize what a, what a problem it is coming from where I come from because in our, you know, we, as somebody once explained, many people from England, they come out of the womb uh, with their arms folded. <laughs> the, national, the national hobby where I come from is not enjoying oneself, or at least, <laughs> at least not showing it. So when, you know, it's great, like Americans, you, you know, as Americans, you, you get so, it's great, you're so enthusiastic about stuff, this is great. In England, not too bad. <laughs> That's like the, the absolute height of brilliance in, 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 to an Englishman is, not too bad, or mustn't grumble. You know, it's, fun, it's kind of, I've been thinking about this for years. I've been living here for 32 years now. I've been lived, for 32 years I've lived in Kentucky. And no doubt you can tell that way I speak. <laughs> but I have lived there for 32 years. So I have a lot of time to think about the differences between, you know, cultural, especially linguistic. And one of the, one, I love the way that we, we share, uh, your, your people and my people have the same expressions and they mean complete diametric opposites. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you two quick examples. Momentarily. In American English, it means in a while. In British English, for a while. <laughs> You're on the first time I came across this. Years ago, first came to America, got on a plane. We were flying to Toronto or somewhere and we were, the voice came on, we will be landing momentarily. So I thought the plane was going to do this. <laughs> so we all got our stuff ready to jump off because we will be landing for a moment. <laughs> and then the other one, which maybe you don't realize this, because we, here we are in St. Louis land of um, you know, Anheuser-Busch and drink and stuff. Um, it doesn't get any better than this, that expression. It does not get any better than this. Now to you guys, it means this is the best thing I've ever seen. It doesn't get any, where we come from, it's, you might as well go home, because it doesn't get any better than this. <laughs> Quite a difference, huh? Quite a difference. So you imagine the first time coming to America. Old Milwaukee, it doesn't get any better than this. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Correct. Anyway, I'll share a few more, to maybe tomorrow night. Uh, I love all these, these weird, you know, uh, uh, things like, Oh, we went down a bomb, yeah? Well, it means, you know, we went down fantastic. No, it doesn't. It means that was a terrible night. <laughs> anyway. Oh, no, I'm getting, getting yourselves all worked up. So anyway, thank you for, put, for putting up this nonsense. And I want, uh, while I'm saying there's a big round of applause for a hardworking guy back down there, Eric Stein, doing this, the sound tonight. Thank you. And, of course, all of his glamorous assistants who are shooting around doing their thing. Yeah, thank you for doing it because it's it's a it's a you know it's a job. Maybe you don't think about this. It's one of those jobs that when they do a really good job, nobody notices, right? And not, so nobody ever applauds them. When they do a bad job, all they get is complaints. So you never get complaints with this girl, these guys. So once again, Eric, thank you. <laughs> all right, here we go. Uh, great, a great whistle player, great flute player. Uh, now living in St. Louis, but for, I know if, I've sort of followed his name over the years. He's, he's played all over the place, New York City, down in, in, down in Louisiana, all kinds of places. Great young player. Um, flute, Tim Whistle, close to my heart. Uh, Mr. Dan Lowry. All right, there it is. Let's see. It was great. Last time I played Irish music on this stage, it was a... Uh, in 2020 during the pandemic. It was like a, a flute concert that was broadcast online, but it was the most lonesome thing I ever did. <laughs> I didn't, didn't know what to do or how to react. You play something in dead silence. It was, uh, so this is a lot less awkward. Thank you for being here. <laughs> I'm gonna kick off here nice and cheerfully with a sad slow air. And uh, this is uh, <clears throat> the, 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 the air to a song that I uh, 
first heard from a mentor of mine who's uh, been on the stage as well, a guy named Cal McConnell, a great flute and whistle player from Fermanagh, and uh, he plays with a band called Boys of the Lock. And, uh, and I've always liked this song that he sang, and I'm just going to play the melody of it. It's called uh, The Flower of Maharali. Spot here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any fans of uh, Lyle Lovett out there? He, he doesn't play Irish music at all, but I'm glad you've heard of him. <laughs> I saw him in town here about six months ago. If you don't know who he is, he's a, he's a great uh, singer and songwriter from Texas. He made a career in Nashville, uh, won a lot of Grammys and all that stuff. Great, great musician, uh, great songwriter. But I saw him about six months here and uh, six months ago here and um, and he was saying how he had um, been recruited by the chieftains to record a track on their cd and uh, he met patty maloney um, their whistle player who uh, passed away about a year and a half ago um, left a great legacy of music behind him um, but anyway he met patty and he said one of the most amazing things he's ever seen on earth is patty maloney playing the tin whistle um, it's true, uh, but he said that the only thing maybe more amazing than that was seeing Patty Maloney eat barbecue. He was just <laughs> surrounded by brisket and covered in barbecue sauce. Yeah, I like that story so much. I don't have any stories of my own, so I'm just going to tell a story about Lyle Lovett's story there. There you go. Um, anyway, I'm going to play a tune that I learned not from Lyle Lovett, but from Patty Maloney. And uh, there's a great album that uh, I noticed that this is actually the 50th anniversary of its release. It came out in 1973, and it's a duet, uh, an album full of tin whistle duets between Patty Maloney and Sean Potts. 
Um, the album's just called Ten Whistles. So if, you, if you haven't heard it, go check it out. Celebrate its 50th anniversary. Anyway, this is a tune on there called uh, The Maid at the Spinning Wheel. And it's a great piping tune, so I thought I'd play it, this being a piping channel and all. And I'm going to invite uh, my old friend and colleague, Alan Murray, out to uh, join me on the bazooki here. Put your hands together for Alan. Welcome him to the stage. So we're going to play this little jig here, the maid at the spinning wheel. And, um, you know, uh, on the album, it's a duet with two tin whistles. So you just have to imagine that Alan's playing the tin whistle here, actually. And, uh, Don't imagine too hard, it might <laughs> Thank you very much. It's Alan Murray on Bazooki there. Thank you. All right. Well, I think we'll finish off with a, a few reels here. And uh, first one is one that Alan and I um, played to death down in uh, Disney World. We were down there for a couple of years, strangely enough. We played uh, we played this tune every day for about two years, but it's <laughs> such a good tune that I'm still not tired of it. So a testament to its quality. It's called Hanley's Tweed, and um, we'll follow that with a, a little tune, a reel I've been playing since I was a kid that I, uh, I actually learned from Kyle McConnell as well. It's called Anything for John Joe. Nice little 
nice little simple tune on the whistle. And then I'll finish that with a, a tune that's a, another version of a common tune. There's a tune called Woman of the House. And this is the less well-known version of that. So it's the other woman of the house is what we like to call it. <laughs> and um, incidentally, I'll be teaching this tune tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. at the workshop. So if you like it and you'd like to learn it, then come to my workshop tomorrow. I'll teach it to you. If you don't like the tune, you can come in the afternoon, and I'll be teaching a different tune then. So maybe you'll like that one instead. <laughs> so anyway, thank you all for listening. And uh, yeah, here's these three tunes. Let's see what happens.
Thanks again very much. It's Alan Murray on Bazooki. Dan Lowry on the whistle. Thank you. There you go. The humble tin whistle, as it's sometimes referred to. Uh, yeah, so um, Dan will be teaching tin whistle tomorrow. I um, mean, a cup penny whistle, as pe some people call it, the tin whistle. And um, so coming towards the end of the evening, as far as this, and then we turn the room over to you guys and next door and enjoy yourselves with some tunes. Um, that last tune that he played, it reminds me of it. Um, I remember doing a concert. Uh, in Germany many years ago, and I used to play that tune myself, and I was feeling full of myself because I thought it a pretty good job, and I came off stage and I was by the selling CDs, you know, remember those? <laughs> and a lady came up very, with a very precise English and said, excuse me, which of these CDs has less flute? <laughs> Instantly, that's, de that's known as deflation. And the other, quickly, the other, the other, other great story about deflation in me is, is I live in rural, not, not wildly rural, but fairly rural Kentucky, about an hour away from Lexington and, and the horse country. And uh, we, have, we have horses out, out, out where we live. In, and I sometimes wear ratty old clothes and, and, you know, covered in horse stuff. And I was on my way to pick up some feed, and I stopped at the bank to do some whatever business there and I was wearing you know a sweatshirt and a seed cap and ripped jeans and I was covered in hay and horse and whatever and it was the weekend of the Kentucky Derby and as I walked into the bank a lady looked at me and she said do you have a horse in the Derby this year <laughs> because she assumed because of the way I was talking that I was probably a, you know a slightly eccentric English horse trainer I said no not this year <laughs> so, so I was kind of floating thinking wow and then I, I did my business. I walked out of the bank and a rotten, a car pulled up with a big old muffler gone and beat brr, 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 and the guy said, hey buddy, how do I get to the detention center? <laughs> so, so I went from that to that. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, enough of that nonsense. Thank you very much for, um, for all of you being here. Um, it's been a great evening. I hope you've enjoyed yourself so much. It's gonna be more music and then all day tomorrow and then on Sunday morning and in the afternoon, it'll be a great weekend especially uh, who's not been able to do it for a while, so it's lovely to be back again. To finish our set, our set off this evening, great musician, uh, Ilan Piper, great flute player, great whistle player, um, a man who gets his music, as we say, honestly. He, gets, he, he got his music from his father, who's a fiddle player, and, uh, and also from uh, some of the great musicians in Chicago, particularly Kevin Henry, the great Kevin Henry flute player and raconteur. So to finish off our um, evening, uh, let's give a big round for Sean Gavin. Thanks very much, everybody, and thank you, John, for the lovely introduction. Sometimes wears ready clothes. I take exception with that <laughs> statement. <laughs> always dress sharp. Um, so I, uh, it's great to be back here in West St. Louis, and uh, I'm gonna play um, some. This, this set of pipes here that I'm going to play for you tonight belong to Al Purcell, who was a great piper from Dublin, who lived in Detroit. Yeah. I think Al was down here many years ago, and as was Kevin, who, who uh, um, John mentioned earlier. But anyhow, I'm going to try a couple jigs for you. Um, the first one's called, um, well, it's either Judy Hines or Nancy Hines, or I'm not sure which one. Maybe they're... I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, I have to ask the composer. I just call it Heinz 57. <laughs> and then um, I'll play one after that, the battering ram that everybody knows usually. And it's one that Kevin Henry used to talk about a lot. He said you could hear the sound. He said the battering ram was a device that was used to knock people's houses down dur back during the evictions. And you can hear the sound of the battering ram at the end of each phrase of the tune. And the two knocks, the like that. So hopefully I'll be able to convey that for you.
<laughs> Thanks very much. Thanks very much. So it's, it's really great to be here for the 25th anniversary. I know everybody's been saying it all night, and I'm not going to talk too much because you've all been very patient sitting through a very long concert. And I don't want to test your patience. But um, I'm going to continue on now with uh, another tune. This one's a slow air that um, we, lo we lost a great uh, musician and friend of a, lot of, of a lot of ours here there back in January, Seamus Begley, who was a, a real legend and beautiful singer and accordion player and rogue and uh, one hell of a guy. And uh, he sang a really nice song that I always loved. Well, he sang a lot of great songs. He knew about every song you could sing. But he sang one um, that I'm going to play for you now called Book Lean Down. So hope you like it. Thank you. Thanks very much. Um, well, thank you so much, everybody, for coming out and supporting this great event. Thanks to Mike and uh, everybody involved for the invitation. And thanks especially to Jennifer and Gavin for putting me up and putting up with me. And they'll be putting me out on Monday. <laughs> but um, I, I'm going to finish off with a couple reels. And uh, I would love it if the great Jackie O'Reilly would be so kind as to do another step, if she's available. But if she's already taken off, then one of you will have to do. <laughs> um, I'm going to try. Um, I'm not, I can't remember the name of this one, but it's, I think I learned it from a recording of um, James Kelly and his brother and his father, John and John. And then uh, the second one is a version of last night's fun. And I missed all the fun last night, so I'm trying to catch up tonight. But it's one that I got from the. The playing of uh, the McDonough brothers of Bal and Afad, who were great musicians um, that, that didn't, didn't come out a whole lot, but uh, had a lot of great music and were captured once upon a time. And this came from that recording. So 
Thank you all so much. It's been a pleasure to, to play for you. And uh, thanks for your great listening abilities and politeness. <laughs> but you don't have to b behave in my company, you know. If you don't know that by now. OK, so when Jackie comes up, make sure to give her a big cheer, all right? Thanks, everybody. Great to play for you. Okay, thanks very much, everybody. There you go. Well, that's the end of our seated part. So now we, by the way, um, Jackie, um, if I didn't know better, I'm sure she's danced with an Inland Piper before. Anyway, um, thank you, real. As, as Sean said, thanks everybody. A big thank you for Eric and, and, of course, Mike Mullins for really working hard all year to get this together. So thank you. Okay, um, that's the end of the sort of uh, you know the concert side. Now it's uh, traditional sessions and, and have you enjoy yourself. So have fun. And if I don't see you later tonight, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye. Cheerio.